Radio across the UK, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. The Unexplained with Howard Hughes on Talk Radio. Talk Radio. Talk Radio. Now, A very important anniversary passed within this last week, the 47th anniversary of the Pascagoula case, one of the most famous alien abduction cases uh, that there's ever been. And the man behind that, Calvin Parker, is online to us now here at Talk Radio. Uh, He and I have talked before, and it's great to have you back on the show, Calvin. Thank you very much for making a little time for us tonight. Great. Thank you for asking me. Uh, How did you, I don't know whether you heard that clip of President Trump uh, talking about UFOs, etc. When your president talks about those things, um, does that make you feel good? Does it make you feel vindicated? It makes me feel really good. And, uh, you know, they've been having, Fox has been having different things on and off all the time about that. Matter of fact, I've done an interview just before I talked to you the last time with, uh, Waters World, and we we went into a little detail about it afterwards. And then the other day, I seen a senator. I was trying to think of one. He, you know, he's kind of a past senator, and he's really getting into it. And he said they there, and he's fixing to make sure it gets opened up and people know about it. Yeah, so it's, I mean, getting it's looking. Popular. It's getting popular, and it's looking like there may be some news on this front uh, next year if if everything goes to plan. But we're hearing more and more about these things. Um, but you, your life is an interesting story, isn't it, Calvin? Because you went through that abduction experience. Basically, you and your friend Charlie uh, were fishing, uh, and there was no one else around there. You were, uh, you say, beamed up to a spacecraft and then examined. It was a hell of an experience uh, for you, and you chose for reasons that I totally get, to more or less stay reasonably silent about that for decades and only start to talk about it again quite recently. And you've done quite a lot of that now. Have you ever had any regrets in these last couple of years since you started talking about Pascagoula again, um, about talking more about it? Well, not really. Uh, there's, it takes a lot of time and a lot of space, but my wife has got into it now okay. after I loosened up and talked to her. Yes, sir. So we this enjoy is the, the talk radio. Are you there, Calvin Parker? I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? Online on DAB and on the talk radio app. Talk radio. The Unexplained with Howard Hughes on talk radio. Well, my apologies. We had a little bit of an issue there. Um, you know, the old engineers thing, it wasn't at my end, but we'll try and find out what that was. I just simply lost uh, contact with Calvin Parker, um, but uh, he's back with us now. Calvin, listen, I'm really sorry about all of that. I was in the middle of asking you um, if you have any regrets about having started talking about all of this again um, in the last couple of years. No, not at all. Uh you know, it takes a lot of personal time where I was going to be re- <clears throat> retired and fishing, but my wife seems to enjoy the traveling and the, all this a lot more than what I do, but I enjoy getting out and meeting the people and speaking. Now, last year was slow. You know, the buyers come around and we just put everything off. Mm, yeah, no, indeed. And and what, are you are you sort of locked down there now or are you back in business? Well, we pretty well got loose from the lockdown, and then now the it's going back up, so they're trying to lock us all down again. Mm, right. Well, who knows what's going to happen either side of the Atlantic. You know, they say one of the things about getting older, which we both are, is that you tend to remember things better when you get older uh, from your younger years. So I wonder if you're recalling any more details of what happened to you, what you say happened to you with Charlie when you were beamed up into into what essentially was um, some kind of craft. Uh, I do. If, if we're in a crowd and somebody's talking, talking and maybe they mention something, then it might trigger a little response from me. But not really, you know, I don't really sit around and think about it. The the way I've learned to handle this is just get out and do what I do and uh, not really think about what had went on or what's going on. 
Mm. Yeah, but, you know, with every anniversary, it must bring it back to you one way or another. It does. I know I was set up to have uh, several book signings and all this anniversary, but the corona kept all of them down. They killed them. So, uh, you know, I just sat back and relaxed, watched a little news. But thinking back on what happened and how you were taken into this, this craft and, you know, the, the beings, you were reacting with them. Um, they had, like, robotic slitty mouths and pincers like crabs had. Uh, when, when you think back about all of that, do you, do you ever think to yourself, did that, did that really happen to me? No, I knew it happened. Uh, but, yeah, you wonder why it happened. Here lately... We've been working kind of on a screenplay about all of it, and I've been having to relive a lot of it to bring back. So, uh, you know, this last few months has been really busy doing that. Okay, and when do you think that might be, you know, might be made and released? Uh, I'm under a confidential thing about it, but it's made <laughs> now. The screenplay's finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, the uh, screenplay is finished. Mm -hmm. uh, looks good. I mean, it, it, the, the writer on this couldn't have done a better job. It's just like he moved in and lived with us, kind of. You know, he didn't, but he was in my head every day and took fantastic notes. And I'm really proud of the uh, way that it's turned out because I've always said I want to keep it honest. Now, when it you know, goes into writing to a movie or something, it won't be a hundred percent. The deductions will, but you know, they might like Philip Mantle told me, they might cut back here on how many police officers you have there or something like that, just to budget the movie a little bit. And that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Right. But it's going to be something that a lot of people, including me, are going to want to see. Uh, one of the other exciting things that's happened over these last couple of years is that there have been new witnesses. And I know that Philip Mantle uh, from Flying Disc Press has been part of the process of getting these people out there. But, you know, even after all of this time, 47 years as it is now, uh, there have been some new witnesses coming out, which is a really exciting development, isn't it? It is. And Philip does a thorough investigation on all of them. He gets Irene Scott to interview them after he gets through and write down great details because I'm not real good in the interview. I'm pretty blunt about things. And like I said before, I don't have the education to sit there and write everything down like they do. But um, it's been some good witnesses come forward. And I always make a point to go meet them and uh, do a little background check on them. And gosh, it's amazing. Weren't there some people who were in a car and actually saw something in the sky very close to where all of this happened in Mississippi? They were. And uh, matter of fact, they was going to work, and his wife had brought him down to uh, meet the ship to go out. He worked on a boat. And they sat across the river and witnessed this happening, and they are so credible. Now, on his deathbed, he told her to never talk about it before uh, because people would think they're crazy. But on his mm -hmm. deathbed, he made them put, put a videotape in there. And he said that was all true, that uh, he'd seen that and he was a witness to it and it was true. So, you know, a man's not going to lie too much on her deathbed. Mm, no, that's absolutely true. They say that they are the best kind of recollections and the best kind of confessions. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, 47 years on, we are still learning new things about this case, Calvin. When you think back on it, um, and I don't know, we're going to be talking about dreams and nightmares in the next hour. Um, I don't know whether you have dreams about this, but when you think about it, what sticks in your mind most? Um, that... They can just come down and take you. You don't have no will in it, whether you want to or not, and experiment with you like a, uh, they used to experiment with animals around here. And that part I don't like. But maybe there's a good reason for it. And you must have asked yourself over all of the decades, you know, why us? 
Why why us at that time? I I have and I'm still hunting the answer to that. I don't know if my in my lifetime that I'll probably ever know that, but I think it is coming up soon. And what are your thoughts on where the, the beings, the creatures, on where they were from? Have you ever had any thoughts? Has anybody tried to point you in that direction as to where they might have come here from? I have no idea. Um, I think at one time, you know, being there was robots on that craft and all, I think they might have been coming from a long ways off. But now I think they kind of travel interdimensional just to get to you. Because you don't see or hear too many UFO landing and sightings like that anymore. They just happen to appear. Well, that's the truth of it. Uh, And with all the attention that you've had, um, last question. And listen, thank you for doing this with me. Oh, you, well. With all all the attention you've had, and I've spoken to you a couple of times on radio and podcasts, you've had a zillion million interviews over the last two years or so. Um, do you feel now more comfortable with it all? If you can ever be comfortable with an occurrence like that, are you more accepting of it? Because a lot of people, you know, regard you as being one of the most important people now in all of ufology and the study of these things. Is it easier? Does it sit easier with you? I think is what I'm saying. Well, it's much easier with me. Number one, I was able, when we did the book, I was able to get out and talk about it then. Before that, I didn't, they didn't nobody know I wasn't even talking to my wife for 46 years about it. You know, I just shun them off. And that's one thing that I wanted to bring out in this screenplay is my life before, my life after, and what happened during all this time. And I think, like I say again, I can't mention his name or nothing or won't until he gives me permission. Mm -hmm. But he's done a great job putting it out there. So is this going to be like a love story? Like a love story? It's like a love story between the people, my family, and all that that really cared for me when I was going through this and taking it so hard. I mean, nobody really knows how hard this has been. And uh, I don't know how he's got it sold in a movie or different things, but he, mm-hmm. you know, I just let them take care of all that. I don't worry about none of it. Philip and uh, this other guy, the screenwriter. Well, you know, I can imagine it must have been a very difficult thing to bear for all of those decades, and I don't know how you did that. But it's possible that this being produced as a screenplay, whether it's a movie or a dramatized documentary, whatever it might be, Calvin. I think you might find that that's going to make it an awful lot easier now. It is. It was uh, when this started coming together, and I started reading it, and I thought, gosh, you know, he nailed this right on the head. I think it's important for other people that get abducted or something to know more about how to handle it. I handled it in all the wrong ways. But uh, it all had a good ending. How did, you, how did, you, what, how did you react to it in the, in the years that immediately followed it? You know, how, what, how did you deal with it? I dodged the media. I dodged my family. I dodged my friends. I didn't want to talk about it. I just wanted to forget all about it. And there's no way you can do that and no way you can live with yourself if you do that. But it's been a hard road. Hmm. And it's almost like something, it's almost like a ghost you've got to exercise, isn't it? It's like something that has to be worked out. And if you don't work it out, it's going to stay with you. Exactly right. Thank God for Philip Mantle, my wife, and this other guy. I mean, if it hadn't been for Philip, I never would have come forward on this. He's the one that I really owe to helping me get my life straightened out now. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm glad. And it's Philip Mantle. Not 100% straight, man. Mm-hmm. Not 100 per- What do you think you still have to do? Uh, I don't know. I'm in question. I got some health issues I'm fighting right now, mm-hmm. and I'll get all of them over. And then I'm going to start, when this virus is lifted, traveling around, doing what I did last year or uh, year before last, traveling and talking to people. The answer's in the general public. And I really feel like that there is walk-ins 
that barge somebody's body and come forward. And, you know, I'd hope to find one of them. Right. Well, I, I wish you luck with all of it, Calvin. Thank you for talking with me. Sorry we had a, a technical problem in the middle of all of that, but it's been a pleasure to speak with you. And I, I wish you well with your health issues. Uh, and I hope that 2021, uh, for you and all of us, is better than 2020 was. Calvin Parker, thank you. Please take care. Gosh, it's got to be. Thank you so much for having me. Y'all have a good day. You too, Calvin. We'll talk again. Calvin Parker there. Uh, and I do apologize for what happened in the middle. It hasn't happened before. It was a bit weird, but we're okay and we're still here. Uh, this is The Unexplained from Talk Radio. Coming next, we're going to talk to a paranormal investigator with a creepy doll that started crying tears. That story next. Stay here. Online, on DAB, and on the Talk Radio app. Talk Radio. Across the UK, early breakfast. Talk Radio. Across the UK, online, on DAB, and on your smart speaker. The Unexplained, with Howard Hughes, on Talk Radio. Talk Radio. Radio.